The Laplace transform of f prime f double and so on can easily be expressed in the terms of the Laplace transform of f. This means that we can get rid of all derivatives in the equation if we take its Laplace transform. Doing so, a differential equation is converted to an algebraic equation. And solving an algebraic equation is much easier than solving a differential equation. So this is a popular method to solve differential equations. We'll discuss all of this in this video. Sounds too good to be true, right? Indeed. There's also a catch, as we will see in the second part of this video. So suppose we have some initial value problem, y double minus 6y prime plus 13y equals 0 with some uh, initial conditions. Okay, we can solve this uh, using other methods, that's not the point, we just want to illustrate what happens if we take the Laplace transform. What happens then? We take Laplace transform left, we also have to take it right, Laplace transform of 0 equals 0. Uh, Laplace transform is linear, so we can split the left hand side up. And what do we get? Laplace transform of y double over here, minus 6 times the Laplace transform of y prime over here, plus 13 times the Laplace transform of y. So we call the Laplace transform of y, capital Y of s. Then we collect all terms within y, so an s squared times a y, a minus 6 s times a y, and a 13 times a y. Uh, we have y prime of 0 equals 0, so this one drops out. Uh, y of 0 equals 1, so we have a minus s, and here we have a minus minus 6, so plus 6 over here. And then we can solve for y of s. So far, so good. So this went really, really fast. Gives us immediately y of s. But now the catch. We have y of s, but we want y of t. So how do we go back? How do we find our y of t once we have y of s? How do we take the inverse Laplace transform? Now, in general, this is uh, pretty difficult. Fortunately, we have seen a few standard cases which we compiled in a table, and this, this table, the table uh, uh, we use in our course, we have the formulas 9 and 10, so that's why I called them 9 and 10 over here. Uh, why not? Why not 9 of s of this form gives a known y of t, and this form over here gives this known y of t. Now we see that our y of s resembles those formula quite a bit, but not exactly. So now the trick is to rewrite our y of s such that we can apply those formulas. Now we see that s squared minus 6x plus 13 equals s minus 3 squared. So that gives us s squared minus 6x plus 9. So we have an additional plus 4. So our y of s equals in the denominator s minus 3 squared plus 4. And then it's already convenient to write s minus 6 as s minus 3 minus 3. Because if we do that, then our y of s equals s minus 3 divided by s minus 3 squared plus 4, which is of this form over here. And we have a minus 3 times 1 over s minus 3 squared plus 4, which is almost like this, but we have a, a b equals 2, so we need a 2 in the numerator. No problem, we put a 2 over here and then we have a minus 3 over 2 two over there. And now we can apply our formulas at 10 for the first term with a equals 3 and b equals 2 and minus 3 over 2 times the formula and 9 with again the b equals 2 and a equals 3. And there we have our y of t. So how do you use Laplace for your differential equations? First transform your differential equation, find y of s, that's the easy part. And then the difficult part, transform back to find your y of t.